But I want to I want to tell you a little story about one man's introduction to parenthood. Okay, it's kind of a little humorous story. This man and his wife were newly married, and they wound up taking a missions trip to Mexico. They wound up taking about 25th and sixth graders down to old Mexico, and uh, part of their assignment was to visit a church down there. And so they got to the church and. And, uh, and the church service was already in progress. They arrived a little bit late. The worship was going on. And, and it was a church that sat about 100 people. And what the place was just packed out. And, and so they took the kids and they lined them all around the back of the sanctuary. And, but they took the, the husband that was helping. He didn't have any children. Took him right up to the front row and had a chair reserved for him. And uh, so he didn't know, this guy didn't speak a word of Spanish, not he didn't speak anything of Spanish. And so the service was going on and he said to him, thought to himself, I don't really know what's going on or what to do. And so he thought, what, what, what should I do? He thought, well, I'll model what I'm doing after the guy that's sitting right next to me. So it started to work out pretty good. You know, when he stood up, this guy stood up. When he sat down, he sat down. When he clapped, the guy who was an American, he didn't know what he said, he's clapping. He didn't know what he was clapping about, but he clapped. When he smiled, he smiled. When he opened his Bible, he opened his Bible. He didn't know what verse to open it to, but he was doing his very best to model himself after that guy. It worked pretty good for the majority of the service. Well, the service came to a close, and... Um, and it was coming to a close, and it seemed like the pastor was giving some announcements. And all of a sudden, a big, uh, you know, bunch of applause began to erupt all over the congregation. And, uh, and, and everybody seemed to be real happy. And uh, the next thing he knew, the guy right beside him stood up. So he just jumped right up to his feet, too. <laughs> Turned around, and he noticed that not another person in the building was standing up. And he noticed that the guy he was modeling himself after him seemed to be very upset. Well, he went ahead and sat back down when the other guy sat down. And right after the service, the pastor who spoke English and Spanish came up to him. He said, well, it's pretty obvious you don't understand Spanish. He said, no, sir, I don't understand. I don't understand the thing. And he said, well, he said, he said, he said, do you understand what happened at the end? He said, no, I don't. He said, well, what I announced was that Maria Costas has had her baby, and would the proud father of the baby please stand up? Well, that was his introduction to parenthood. How many of you know uh, being a parent isn't easy? Sometimes you kind of feel like a bumbling American. You're trying to do the best you can, and it seems inevitable that you're going to make some mistakes along the way. I don't know how you felt when you brought little Johnny or Susie or whatever your child's name was home from the hospital, but I remember bringing Dustin home from the hospital, and I'm going to be honest, I was about as overwhelmed as a, a young father could be, and uh, and I remember looking at him and his little toes and his little eyes and his little fingers. And, and I told my wife, hey, honey, I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm glad she knew a little bit more than I. But how many of you know parenting is a huge job, right? Yes, and, 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 and being a parent is a great responsibility. And this morning I want to ask the question, what does God want from us? What is the goal of parenting? And here's what I have discovered in all these years of experience that I've had in life and in ministry. I have discovered that things are more caught than they are taught. Children pay far more attention to our behavior than what we say. I want you to know that your children are going to model themselves after you. Now, they're not going to admit that. <laughs> They would even die to believe that you have any effect on their life. But it's true. As a parent, you're walking the road before them, and they are coming behind you. Children have never been very good at listening to their parents, but they've never failed to imitate them. Am I right? The verse that I want to share a verse to kind of set this up today. Out of the book of Proverbs 20 and verse number 7, the scripture tells us this. It tells us that a righteous man who walks in his integrity, how blessed are his sons after him. What is this verse saying? This verse is saying 
that if we walk in integrity as parents, if we walk in the narrow path, the straight way, if we live as we should live, then our children are going to catch our integrity. They will follow in our footsteps. And so I want to talk to you today about five life areas. If our kids truly catch what we do, uh, then what should we be modeling for them? And today I want to look at five areas, and I put it kind of in an acrostic called model, M-O-D-E-L. And so we're going to just jump right into this. The first one is M. We need to manage our time. Manage your time. Let me just read from an article called Making Parenting a Priority. This article says, does work get in the way of being a good parent? Does being a good parent mean you're bound to run into trouble at work? And the article goes on to say, children are losing out on their parents' time through the demands of the American workplace, and the case can be made that kids are paying a high price as a result. The article goes on to say this. It says, experts from a range of fields confirm that times children spend with their parents is not just nice. It's vital to every aspect of their healthy development. Not getting enough time with parents, they contend is detrimental to thinking and coping skills, school performance, and even their health. Just parents spending time with kids around the house. Now, work in today's world is phenomenal. No, most people work a lot more than a typical 40-hour work week. Uh, I don't know if most of you are, maybe have never watched Leave It to Beaver, but there was a day when Ward Cleaver would come home and he, you know, had time to sit around the house and he had time to putz around the garage with the bee. But we live in Houston, right? And there's an hour drive to work for some people. And besides that, you don't really have to be at work to be at work. How many know what I'm talking about? You've got a cell phone. You've got a laptop. You're, you, they can reach you wherever you are at and you receive telephone calls while you're you're trying to enjoy your life and so we can be accessed 24 7 how many of you heard about the dad who uh you know had, he had just had so much work he brought some work home to do his little girl comes up to him and she says daddy can you play with me and and and, and the dad was trying to explain and he said honey he said i, I want to play with you right now but i can't because I've got some work that I have to do. I didn't get all my work done at work, and I just have to finish this, and then maybe we'll play. And the little girl sat there like this for a moment and put her hand on her hip like this, and she said, well, Daddy, she said, maybe they can put you in a slower group at work. <laughs> How many of you say I'd like to be put in a slower group at work? Hello? Come on, somebody. I'm just telling you that time is important. In the book of Ephesians, right? Ephesians 5 verse 15 says this, be careful then how you live, not as unwise people, but as wise, making the most of time because the days are evil. Now, if I can paraphrase that verse, I would say something like this, when your values are clear, your decisions are evil. Are, are easy. Excuse me, I'm sorry. <laughs> Let me say that over. Whoops. When your values are clear, your decisions are easy. <laughs> hmm. You say, well, what should our priorities be? Here's what I think of anyone's priority ought to be. First of all, your personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. How many think that has to be the number one priority in your life? That has to be number one. If you're married, the second priority is your spouse. And if, if you have children, the third priority ought to be your children, okay? That's the way our priorities run. Uh, and so, I, but, but many times we actually don't live according to those priorities. And I don't get me wrong, I know what it is to be busy, and I know what it is to work hard, and sometimes I can get in a little mode where I'm just working, 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 and when I do that, really, sometimes it's easy for me to kind of dishonor those that are closest to me. Uh, and, you know, and sometimes we, we try to make up for that in a couple of ways. One way that parents try to make up for that is they try to buy their kids stuff. How many of you know that kids don't want stuff, they want their mom and dad, am I right? And secondly, 
they, they, uh, they try to have their kids involved in everything extracurricular. Okay, now don't get me wrong, I'm not against softball or football or soccer or any of those things. I like those things, in fact. But let me tell you something, if that's what pushes your family over the edge emotionally, maybe you ought to think about it. If you've got your kids enrolled in three or four different things and you've got two or three different kids, you're coming over to work, you're running, trying to get the uniforms there and it's just constant pressure, pressure, pressure. There's no time, there's no margin in your life and really the, the, the anger sometimes that it's expressed, trying to get there, trying to get it all done, it's not, is it worth it? That's all I'm saying. Ephesians chapter 6, 4 says this, Fathers, don't exasperate your children by coming down hard on them. Take them by the hand and lead them in the way of the master. That's in the message paraphrase. In other words, we're supposed to lead them the way the master would lead them. And I tell you, I, I just cannot imagine Jesus being in a rush. How many of you think he was? I mean, yeah, sometimes he was very single-minded about where he was headed. But he, he, time never did stress him out, right? Uh, and and I, I just can't imagine him being that way. And so one area of life that we can model for our children, even my, and for our grandchildren, even great-grandchildren, is being able to, to manage our time wisely and, and make our kids a priority, make the children a priority. I, and then you notice what I didn't say. I didn't say make sports a priority or, or make extracurricular activities a priority, make them a priority. And if all of those things fit into that, that's just okay as well. And then, oh, the second uh, part of our crossing model is we need to observe teachable moments. Whether you're in line at McDonald's or driving down the street or, or you know, in the backyard having a barbecue, there's teachable moments. In fact, whether you realize it or not, you're teaching your kids. How many of you know that? If you're a grandparent, you're teaching your kids by what you say and what you do. And some parents uh, just kind of leave everything to happenstance. Uh, some parents don't actually know how to be parents and that, that they're afraid to set boundaries. Can I, can I say something? Being your child's best friend is not the maximized way to be a parent, okay? Being a parent is the best way to be a parent, okay? And parents set boundaries and parents set rules uh, as parents. Uh, uh, so what I'm saying is go ahead and be a parent. I got to thinking about my son Derek today. And uh, back when we moved to Columbia, South America, I'll never forget the day he came in sucking on a mango seed, all right? And uh, he had ate this mango seed, and, and for some reason, he just thought to himself, I'll just toss this on the floor, okay? So he just, I, he, right in front of me, just do this mango seed on the floor. I found a teachable moment, hello? I said, what are you doing? And we had a maid at that time who came in and, and worked with us and cleaned the house. And we were teaching our kids and doing missionary work. It was very economical and down there. So he said, well, look, he said, at our Pablo's house, that's what they do. They just put it on the floor, the maid will get it. And I said, well, dude, we don't do that here. I'm so sorry, we're gonna respect the maid. We're not gonna throw stuff on the floor. How many of you ever had a teachable moment with your kids, right? You take it right then at that moment that it comes. Now, 